Here we go again with Mutt Lang, but this time we're throwing Max Martin into the OR as well. How do these guys and other great producers and mixers get such an even low end in their tracks? Find out next on Music Surgery with Dr. Bob. One of my personal pet peeves is grooving along, listening to a song on the radio, and half of the bass notes in the song disappear. When the low end is uneven, the entire foundation of your song sucks. Let's find out how Mutt, Max Martin, and some of the other greats make their bottom in so smooth and so even. Okay, so the most important thing to remember while you're twerking is to keep yourself jiggly and wiggly. Not that bottom in, you freaking idiot. Mutt and Max is bottom in. Roll it. Okay, so let's listen to this loop of drums and 808 bass. And let me point out some of the inconsistencies that you'll probably hear anyway with the 808 bass. Okay, okay, so we definitely have some notes louder than the other. And you would think that simply adding a compressor or a limiter would take care of that problem. But what we also have are different amounts of low end information going on with every note because as the note gets higher in the scale, so do our primary frequency ranges of that note. Watch. So this is why when you're listening to the radio, to a lot of these songs, these R&B songs, these rap songs, where the bass is all compressed and all the notes are the same level, they're still not giving you all of the same amount of low-end information for your track because the primary low-end range of the note is higher. So what do we do as the song plays to get the same amount of low-end information in our track, to cushion our track, to support our track, even though there's not as much low-end in the four or five notes of the scale, or the four chord or the five chord notes as the one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bounce this 808 down to a WAV file, because right now it's a VST instrument. Okay, so now that I've bounced that down, let me separate all of these notes out. The one, the four, the six, the one, octave up, and the five. Let's make a different track for every one of these notes. You can see that they're all roughly the same level. But now let's take a look at the first two and try to match up the low end of the first two. Because sometimes the level of something and the perceived level of something are totally different. So let's look. Pretty close. Let's go in and look at what our primary note is on the four. Right here, about 52. Let me get a tight cue on that, raise it up a little bit, turn the level down, and let's see if these match low end wise. Great, now I've turned this down, but I've also boosted a bit of 52 to try to match the low end of our track. Not the levels of the low end of our track, but the low end of our track. Let's go to the six chord. See what that looks like. So that's about 70. So let's go in at 70. Make the cue not quite as tight. So we grab a little more of this information down here. And let's see if that helps 
match the low end to these first two. I can still turn this down and get low end information, even though our levels are going down in volume. The perceived volume of the bass is staying the same. Now, this one's trickier because it's an octave up from R1 here. So let's find out what this one is. Okay, we're up around 82. So let's do the same thing. Let's go to 82. But let's still grab some of the low end information around it we can probably turn it down. Let's see how we do. I'm going to even grab some more. Great. Now for our last note, the five. Let's figure out where the primary note is ringing in the five. Right about 59. Right about 59, so here we go again. 59, I'm gonna make this cue a little tighter. Okay, let's listen to them all in a row and see what we get. Now, some of you may be saying, I don't know many songs where Mutt Lang used 808 bass. You're right. He most of the time used a live bass player. But I wanted to show you in more of a modern context that, yes, that can be done with a live player, electric bass. It could be done with an acoustic bass, and it can be done with 808, which we're using a lot these days in pop music. So now... Let me take all of those and put those into a group. So here we should have our group of all these 808s. And let me put a touch of compression. Not much because I don't want to mess the low end up that we've got. So let's listen through and see if now we not only have the same level for every note that's played, but we have the same perceived level that will give us a solid even bass part in the song for everything else to rest on now if you hear a track on the radio with this kind of care and management and manicuring when the bass hits the four of the scale the octave up or the one the five or the six you're gonna have an even low end and it's not gonna disappear you're gonna want all of these to be an even level and an even level perceived in the low end that's how it's done so this process obviously takes more time than just recording a bass part and slapping a compressor on it. But do you want to be good or do you want to be great? You want to be great, of course. Take the extra time on your low end. I promise it's worth it. My staff and I are in constant fear of botching a case. So malpractice insurance can be quite costly. But if you hit subscribe below, which is free, you can help us a great deal and in turn be notified every time an episode of Music Surgery with Dr. Bob hits YouTube. Thanks for watching and pass the salsa. What? Thanks again for watching another episode of Music Surgery. I'm Dr. Bob and I'll see you the next time. The doctor's in. Jiggly and wiggly. Not that bottom in, you freaking idiot. Mutt and Max's bottom in. <laughs>